The Metis Tech Show. Welcome to the Metis Tech Show, a show for HVAC professionals by HVAC professionals. The Metis Tech Show. So when's the last time you were in Nashville? I've never been to Nashville. Rick, have you been to Nashville? Uh, yes, I have. Did you know that there's a whole sandwich, a style of sandwich named after Nashville? So I was I was in Nashville a few months ago, and I had no idea that there's a whole chicken sandwich named after Nashville. So somebody told me to go to Hattie B's, right? And I asked, I asked for the spicy. It was so good. It was delicious. But apparently, Nashville is known for their chicken, their spicy chicken sandwiches. It was delicious. I was, I couldn't believe it. And I want to go to Nashville just to get chicken with honey, right? No, well, the honey. There's a now. This is going to sound strange because the Hattie Bees was really good, and I'm sure there are other places. And those of you who live in Nashville are probably going to say, "Oh yeah, you shouldn't have gone to Hattie Bees. Go here, go there." Just like any place, any city you go to. There's places the people send you, the tourists, and there's places the locals go. But I went to Hattie B's. I had a very good meal, uh, spicy chicken. It was delicious. So a couple of weeks after that, I came up here back home to Massachusetts. There's a place down the street from the office that we've been sending people to. It's called Nan's, and they have a, a hot and spicy chicken sammy. Or sweet and spicy chicken sandwich. Yeah, that's what it is. It's incredible. Right? It's the best chicken sandwich I've ever had. You got this Nashville style chicken in a nice bun, and it's spicy chicken, a little spicy. It's not as spicy as the one I had at Hattie B's. And then they drizzle it, the whole thing in honey. So yeah. your fingers get sticky, but you're eating this thing, and it's it's the best chicken sandwich I've ever had. It's just it's good. And, and yeah. thank you, Nashville, for your contribution to the culinary world because that was it was delicious. Yeah. So Nan's is a, Nan's used to be a Wendy's, and now they 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 opened up, and it's they sell like maple syrups and coffee and um, coffee you know beans and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it kind of look looks like a gift shop type. Yeah. It throws you off a little bit, but and they got other foods like yeah, they got quinoa and Brussels sprouts stuff that no guy would ever eat. <laughs> My wife would love that store. Yeah. You know, uh, bulgur or something, you know, all this, you know. But it is delicious. Um, yeah. But it, when we go there, we get the chicken Sammy. Right. Hot chicken Sammy and, uh, yeah. yeah and, we've sent, and we've sent students there from class and it's the best chicken sandwich. And they all come back. It was so good. It was so good. But the 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 the, uh, the term Nashville hot, that's being associated with so many things now. That's actually like a heat index, you know, in when you look at like the Scoville units and all that, and Nashville hot is starting to fit right in there. Everything is chicken Nashville hot, you know, um, starting to see a lot of that popping out now. All right. So if you're in Nashville, check out the chicken sandwiches. If you're in Massachusetts, Nan's is on Route 9 on the Westboro, Southboro line right before 495. I think they have another uh, location in Stowe, Massachusetts. So... I recommend those, but if you get a chance to go to Nashville, go to Nashville. Yeah, so if you're coming to training in Southboro, at our Southboro Training Center, uh, definitely you want to check this place out. And they have a drive through so if you order ahead of time, call in. You could just swing around, use the old Wendy's drive through and grab your sandwich. You know what just occurred to me? Nashville is known for what? Worldwide, what's Nashville known for? Country music. Country music. And here we're sending people go there to eat. <laughs> Get the music. In. Go to eat. It just, well, if you saw us, you'd understand. Yeah, we're talking about food again. Yeah. Well, let's get down to business. So uh, my name is Paul Shavs. Uh, with me is Steve Pimentel. And joining us once again from our uh, headquarters in Swanee, Georgia, is Sir Rick Powell. Welcome, gentlemen. How are you today? We're good. How's everything down there? How's the weather? It is cloudy and hot and steamy. It's actually the same here, actually. So, so good. I know. I know. That's the amazing thing. You know, uh, <clears throat> I grew up here, was born and raised here, grew up here. Um, it's funny, right, Steve? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> can never tell. <laughs> Wait, I, I've, got, I've got something for Steve here. I just want to do it real quick. 
Oh, oh nice. See. Yeah, so Rick Rick is using <laughs> his avatar right now on on Teams, which is pretty cool. I didn't know you could do this. Yeah. No, I, yeah, I, I just figured that out the other day. So kind of so looks like you. Rick joined us, I don't know, several episodes ago. Um, I forget what we talked about, uh, but he's back again. So uh, he's back to help us. Thermostat interface. That's and, what we yeah, talked That's what we talked about. That was a so, great episode. So we got an email from uh, our one listener, uh, Nick. Oh, come on. From, we got more than one listener. <laughs> well, he's the one who's emailing us. Yes. So uh, Nick emailed us a while back a question uh, right after we did the LEV episode. Rick Nick, wasn't Nick, part of it. Nick is out of Hawaii. Hawaii. Yeah. Yes. You know, my wife and I were in Hawaii, right? And was, no, I'm sidetracking here. But she was very conscious. She wanted to pronounce things the right way. You know, she was Mauna Loa, you know, and she was saying mahalo and all these things. And she was all into it. And we get back, and she sees this sign. She goes, if we were in Hawaii, that would be called Uhau. And I said, no, if we were in Hawaii, that would be U-Haul. <laughs> hold, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Um, oh, there we go. I thought you could do the crickets. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Nick, Nick is, um, he's emailed us before. Is the crickets. Yeah, there we go. Okay. All right. So he's from the uh, great state of Hawaii. He's actually, uh, I think he met Rick. Uh, he sent us an email after we did the LE episode on LEVs. He was asking us um, how do they work differently on the S series or the smart multi series. So here's the thing, Paul. We've done a lot of episodes on residential equipment, right? We haven't really tapped into the commercial city multi with our episodes yet. They're coming. Um, <clears throat> you know, there's a lot of lot of we have to hit that commercial side of things. So I think that's why Nick was asking, "Hey, is there a difference?" Be- from residential LEVs versus commercial LEVs and how they operate. Right. So so Nick emailed us, and back then we answered him on, on an email, and actually Rick uh, gave us the answer. That's why you're back here, Rick, to give us the answer on, on that. So on the LEVs, what's the difference in operation on a smart multi or the old S-series uh, system versus an R2 or a Y series? How different does the yeah. LEV behave? Okay, so this kind of threw a twist in there, right? Because on your your um, branch box units, um, the way they're designed, each indoor unit modulates together. So your LEVs, if you were on a one-to-one system, you just got one LEV and it modulates to maintain a good zero to five degree superheat across the coil. Um, but on a branch box or a, on that type of system, you're using M-series indoor units. Um, whichever unit modulates down, each each of your units will have a maximum position that the LEV can go to, and that is set by the size of the unit. So a, a 24,000 BTU unit will have a, a wider LEV aperture than a 12,000 BTU unit. So in other words, Let's say we got zero to a thousand pulses. Your 24 may go up to 450 pulses, whereas a 12 may only go to 350. Okay. And whatever indoor unit starts to satisfy first, as this LEV modulates down, let's say it goes from 100% to 70%, the other indoor units, even though they're not satisfied, they will also go from 100% down to 70% along with that unit. So let's say the 24 had a 450 maximum pulse and the 12 had a 350 if the if the um, the 24 modulated down or even if the 12 modulated down to 70% of the 450 or the 350, the other unit would also go to 70% of its maximum throttle down, even though it's not satisfied. Really? So that, that kind of confuses people. Because what you're looking at in these these um, multi-zone units is it's like taking, a, a, say it's a, a three-ton unit, but you got three heads on it. All you've done is taken the evaporator and divided it up into three sections. It's okay. still only going to provide the three tons, but it's going to modulate all of them up and down like those evaporators were merged together and they were one evaporator going up and down. Mm. Interesting. That's a great way of putting it. That is a good way to put it. It actually makes sense. 
but that's that's the way they work and it confuses people because you think well this this zone is still calling but the other zone because it satisfies first is pulling this zone down too and the reason for that is is that outdoor unit is still a three-ton outdoor unit it can't it can't modulate down to a two-ton out i mean it can modulate down but it can't do like our big commercial stuff does where it can section off parts of the coil and make the condenser coil smaller than what it is yeah now that's on the smart multi with the branch box and m&p heads does it behave differently when we don't use a branch box and we put city multi heads on it yes it will behave differently because then they will will work independently of each other however by design and i can't really go into real depth detail about how these these units work they do work differently than our our Y series R and R2 and and just their control logic is different. All right. It gets it gets more in detail, but I think it's more than we can cover in a Right. Right. You know, and it's sure. it's for me, I would need images and diagrams to right. understand it. So so Nick, that hopefully answers your question. And Nick emailed us. So Steve, what's the email address if somebody else has a question for us? Um that would be Metis Tech Show at hvac.mea.com. Yeah, so um, if there's anybody else listening besides Nick, you know, please feel free to email us with either a question or a topic. If you want to hear a specific topic, let us know. And then after we had Rick on, when we talked about the thermostat interface, Nick sent us an email saying how wonderful he thought Rick was and what a fan of the show he is. And yeah. I think he called himself HVAC super fanboy or something. Um which uh, which leads me to believe that I think uh, Nick is in some serious need of some counseling, but that's okay. He likes our show, so uh, <laughs> uh, it's uh, it's okay. He's not quite all there, but we're good. We like him. Uh, we love to have fans. Come on, like Paul. That. You're not all there. I know, which is why uh, why <laughs> I've never met Nick, but I'd get along with him. He's yeah, been, and, and and he's been to several of our training classes. Yes, he's got training out there with a distributor out there. He goes to Houston job. to the Houston Training Center. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, uh, so let's segue in to this since we're talking about LEVs. Let's talk about the LEV kit. So, what is the LEV kit, Rick? It is a way for you to put your air handler on one of our outdoor units. And we're talking city multi outdoor units. Now we're talking commercial VRF, not mini splits, right? right? Commercial VRF. So you can, and I use this term lightly. Technically speaking, uh, you're supposed to use one of our mechanical engineers to assist you when, with, when choosing an evaporator coil to, to connect this to so that we keep a good standard of, of operation and, and uh, efficiency. But it, Literally, you could take any air handler and attach this to it. What it is is the indoor circuit board, uh, the the uh, the thermistors and the LED heads that you can connect to your air handler, and then put put a city multi outdoor unit on it. Now, in the beginning, you could use an S series. Now, I've never had a problem with the S series, but our product planning team. And for those who don't understand the S-Series, that is a Pumi or a Smart Multi, the product planning team claims that there is a, a some firmware version that will throw an error code if you try to put this on a, on a Pumi or a Smart Multi so that it won't work. But for our R2 and Y-Series, you can, can definitely use this and control your own air handler. Okay. And, so, it, and these are available between... Um, 6,000 BTUs and 240,000 BTUs. Am I correct in saying that? Oh, no, that's a good question. You I think I had the... Um... But the, there is a wide range. Um, and I'm just going by our city multi-class when we talk about the or, LEV kit. And it's probably the most I know about the LEV kit. I, can, I barely know I how get, to spell it LEV. Goes, <laughs> it, it goes from 4,800 BTUs all the way up to 240,000. Oh, wow. So you can go from... So, a half a ton, a little less than half a ton, all the way up to 20 tons. Right. And I, I just want to reiterate what Rick just said a few seconds ago. The important thing here is uh, it's true with any city multi job. You can't just show up and start slapping a system together. 
You need to have a plan. You need to have a DSB. It needs to be designed. We have our own um, sales en- engineers that can design these for you. To make sure you have the select the right equipment, the right LEV kit. So don't just go buy one and install it on any air handler. Please get our folks involved either at your distributorship or your, or regionally um, contact your business unit, your Mitsubishi business unit, and we'll get an engineer to help you with that. So I just wanted to go back to that and emphasize that. So the purpose of the LEV, it comes with the controllers um, as if it were one of our indoor units. But now I can put this on a third-party air handler, correct, Rick? So that is, right. yeah, that is okay. correct. And and it still has all the control options that you have with any of our indoor units. So you could use the MHK2, you could use a an MA controller, a PAR. 40 or a simple MA controller. You can use the Kumo Cloud app. You could use uh, ME, smart ME controller. Yep. You can use a thermostat interface. It has all the same control options that you have with any other right. device. So, so what's the advantage to the LEV kit? I mean, if I'm going to come in and, and put a brand new city multi-system into a building, why would I opt to, to use a third-party air handler rather than um, a Mitsubishi air handler. Well, the biggest the biggest thing that that I can think of and that I do see all the time is that we the biggest air handler we make is a ninety six thousand. Um, with this one, you can go all the way up to two hundred forty thousand. Mm. So you can put a much bigger air handler. With this. So I get the benefits of the VRF with just more capacity. Yeah, so what I hear a lot of here in the Northeast, um, its popularity is an is an outside air, the ERV, right, right. So um, they're trying to condition fresh air or to condition outside air into a building. So they're doing this on a large scale. The LEV kit is their answer, um, especially part. Uh, you know, being with train, um, it's not uncommon to see a lot of our city multi equipment and train ERV systems. Um, or any other third-party ERV system on a job uh, where they're they're covering a large part of the building with that fresh air, and they're able to condition that air, dehumidify it, heat it, right? Um, that's what I see here in the Northeast quite a bit of uh, what they're using the LEV kit for. Yeah, and because this is going to be an engineer job, we don't want to get too technical into that, but I'm assuming uh, that the LEV kit is addressed just like another indoor unit. Uh, yes, it is, and and that's getting getting back to what Steve said. One of the primary reasons that the LED kit was developed is it has two modes of operation. Traditionally, all of our indoor units work out for return air temp for for space temp, right? And over the years, we get a lot of requests for people that want supply air temp control. That's one of the options you can get in this. You can use a zero to ten or a zero to five volt uh, input and control to supplier temp and that that's where that falls into your outside air units where you you're bringing outside air in you want to keep it at a neutral you know 68 degrees or 70 degrees uh, this one allows you to look at the supplier temp leaving that unit and control to that rather than return temp. oh interesting <clears throat> wow yeah so the the control box that the lev kit comes with is is quite big right and it kind of throw some people off but it's basically all of your addressing dials are on there um, your port assignment dials and there's a ton of dip switches on there as well all your your m1 m2 connections it just gets daisy chained basically just like an indoor unit um onto that job right uh, right right it's you're you're literally making your air handler a mitsubishi indoor unit it's not a mitsubishi indoor unit obviously but you're making it where it will work just like a Mitsubishi in there. Oh, nice. All the components are there. Yeah. So it, correct me if I'm wrong, there is a discharge air thermistor with the LEV kit as well. It's optional that you can use. So there is, and this is, there are some little things that can, can cause you problems, right? So there is a discharge air thermistor, a return air thermistor, and two pipe thermistors, one for the, the liquid pipe and one for the gas pipe going in and out of the evaporator. If you're using supplier control, you're obviously going to target that supplier temp. Right. If you're using return air control, you can 
monitor the, the supplier temperature sensor. However, when you do that, it limits the the the, um, the temperature at which the supplier can come out. It limits it to 55 degrees, and if you do go below that 55 degrees, it will, even though you're just monitoring it, it will modulate the LEV down. You're in return air control. So a lot of people like, and that's something that, you know, coming from a commercial background, people tend to get hung up on wanting to maintain and supply a 55 degree air temp, uh, which is fine and dandy in a big building where you have satellite VAB, VBT boxes that have reheat in them. Yep. Um, but but in a standard application where it's just an air handler, there's no no real reason that I see to supply 55 degree air. But we have engineers, and I see it on plans a lot, a lot of copy and paste specifications wanting supplier of 55 degrees and this allows us to meet that demand yeah yeah that's very common so i worked at Rhode Island hospital uh for for 10 years and everything is vav controlled so all the air handlers and um throughout all of the buildings at the hospital basically their job is to supply 55 degree air it's like a standard yeah so from there that we can reheat that air um and like i said through vavs and 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 reheats and what whatnot but um, interesting. Is there anything else we can touch on in the LEV kit, Paul? Uh, um, no, I think um, I think we hit it all. We talked about the most common applications. I think, uh, and basically, it just it just capacity, and it's just another choice. It, it's just another choice that you have if you're putting a system to, together. And, yeah, and it's again, a win-win putting yeah. a putting a, a a piece of equipment on a, an inverter driven. Uh, Mitsubishi system, um, it's a win-win for everybody. Yeah, and let's just make sure it's uh, it's designed properly and engineered properly. Get the distributor involved. Get us in- involved. You don't just want to show up and do this yourself and start slapping it together. Rick, anything else to add? I think that covers it. All right. All right. Thanks All right. again, Rick. Thanks, everybody. Dropping in, and uh, we'll see everybody on the next episode of the Metas Tech Show. All right. Now, do you think um, – do you think Nick has a sense of humor? He'll understand. I was just kidding. I'm sure he has counselor. a sense of humor. And he probably knows that your sense of humor. So Yeah, because he's got to be one of the three people listening to the show. Yeah. 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 We, Come on. we got more listeners. All right. we, we, 36 countries. we got thousands of downloads. 36 countries. Yes. Yeah, I'm surprised there's oh. that many people with nothing to do. And all over thousands the world. Thousands of downloads. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. 36 yeah. countries. That's the amazing thing. People are listening to us all over the world. Really? Yeah. Well, at least Australia's in wintertime. They got nothing to do. Yeah. We're actually they're actually they're listening. Australia, New Zealand, yeah. Japan. Tanzania. Tanzania. Yeah. Although a first person to listen outside of the country was someone in South Africa. We were like, that was like our second or first episode. Yeah, we were like, Yoohoo! Yeah, look it, at this. Yeah. yeah. It turned out it was the it was the business unit director from the Northeast who was there on his honeymoon <laughs> and downloaded it. So. But everybody else.